According to the laws of evolutionary development, competition is typically won by the species that is better adapted and stronger. While we are currently the only human species on the planet, our distant ancestors faced significant competition from other contenders for the title of ruler of nature during their emergence. In this video, we will explore who else lived and evolved alongside our species and why cro ultimately proved to be stronger and more successful. In the absence of natural disasters and other factors, the struggle for survival usually favors the animals and plants that can adapt more quickly to changing conditions and develop traits that their competitors lack. The primary weapons of our distant ancestors were their advanced intelligence and high level of socialization. Additionally, the constant changes in their environment during their migration across the planet greatly influenced their development. All the human species that could have competed with the cro had already appeared on Earth long before them. By the time this new species arrived in their territory, the others had a significant head start in preparing for the competition for survival. They had already adapted to the climatic conditions, developed their survival strategies, and learned to use and create various necessary tools. There is a belief that cro thanks to their developed brains, quickly absorbed and improved essential skills from the native inhabitants, eventually pushing them into harsher living conditions. Notably, this displacement did not occur through armed conflict. Due to their social nature and larger populations, cro society was able to more rapidly explore and exploit territories and resources. The previous inhabitants of these areas were forced to make do with the remnants or relocate to new places. Throughout different periods and in various corners of the globe, alongside Homo sapiens, there existed between five and eight other human species. Different groups of scientists classify these species in various ways, sometimes separating them and sometimes grouping them together. All these species share a common ancestor, but at some point, their evolutionary paths diverged. Scientists also struggle to pinpoint the exact timelines of these related species' existence, so it is far from certain that all of them went extinct due to our distant ancestors. According to various estimates, cro appeared on the African continent between 100,000 and 200,000 years ago. Around 50,000 years ago, they left Africa and began to spread across the globe. Just 30,000 years later, there were no other human species left coexisting with them. All had either been exterminated or pushed into uninhabitable regions by the new masters of the planet. It's possible that some of these species were assimilated into cro society. Evidence for this theory lies in the presence of genes from other species and modern humans. However, some scientists argue that these genes were inherited from common ancestors and that different human species could not interbreed. cro lived in groups of up to 100 individuals. They built shelters from animal hides and created earth dwellings, and they also made use of caves for habitation. They wore clothing made from animal skins, but one of their most significant traits was their ability to communicate clearly and effectively with one another. This skill allowed them to hunt more organized and cooperatively, enabling cro to collectively take down large game such as mammoths, deer, and other hoofed animals. Additionally, these early humans mastered the creation of a wide array of useful tools and devices. Their spear thrower, a device capable of launching a spear over 100 meters, greatly improved their hunting efficiency. They could catch small animals and birds using snares, and for fishing, they invented harpoons and hooks. An important development during this time was the domestication of animals. Scientists believe that humans began to tame dogs around this period. The high level of development is also evident in the cultural artifacts left behind by cro -Magnets. They created numerous works of art, cave paintings, jewelry, and even children's toys. Researchers also note the complexity of their burial rituals. All of this suggests that these prehistoric people dedicated significant time to activities beyond mere survival and food acquisition. So, what could other human species counter with against this level of organization and social structure? Homonality. Until recently, it was believed that the remains discovered in South Africa belonged to a later branch of humanity. These beings went extinct long before the emergence of the first Homo sapiens. However, recent research has revealed that these remains are only 200,000 years old. This means that these primitive humans could theoretically have coexisted with the early representatives of our species. 
Unfortunately, aside from the bones and skulls of Homo Nality, no other artifacts have been found. In the cave where they rested, there are no traces of tools, clothing, or any organic materials. It's likely that these creatures were closer to Australopithecus. Their hands were adapted for climbing trees, while their leg structure allowed for long-distance travel and efficient running. Heidelberg Man there is a theory that this species may have been a link from which the lines of modern humans and Neanderthals diverged. Heidelberg man looked quite different from contemporary humans, but their brain size was only slightly smaller than ours, and they could have reached a height of up to 175 centimeters. Distinctive features of these people included massive brow ridges, the absence of a chin, a thick-walled skull, and a low forehead. Their dental arch was almost indistinguishable from ours. According to various sources, this species originated in Africa around 500,000 years ago and later spread throughout Eurasia. It is believed that the African and European branches of Heidelberg man were isolated from each other for a long time and evolved independently. The most recent remains of this species date back to about 130,000 years ago suggesting that they may have interacted with our ancestors during the early stages of their existence. Despite their appearance, Heidelberg man was quite intelligent. Members of this species undoubtedly knew how to use fire and create primitive tools. There are indications that they were the first to use stone tips and possibly practiced caring for their elderly and infirm kin. They lived in groups of several dozen individuals and hunted large game of their time cooperatively. Florist Man and Java Man During the migration of prehistoric human ancestors, some groups of various hominins found themselves isolated on islands. A prominent example of such a population is the inhabitants of the island of Java, who lived there around 100,000 years ago. Over time, they developed unique traits that distinguished them as a separate species. However, like all isolated populations, Java Man was doomed to slow decline and eventual extinction. Likely, in an environment with abundant food and a lack of threats, they were unable to fend off new predators or competitors that appeared on the island. A similar fate befell the inhabitants of Flores Island. Their degeneration manifested in a reduction in both body size and brain capacity. They arrived on the island approximately 1 million years ago and went extinct just 50,000 years ago. Over the last 450,000 years of their existence, their brain size shrank by more than half. Some researchers believe that a major volcanic eruption could have contributed to their demise. It is also plausible that the last hobbits of Flores were wiped out by Homo sapiens, who were at that time populating the Pacific Islands on their way to the Australian continent. Denisovans this species was discovered quite recently and is named after the Denisova cave in Altai. It is now believed that they inhabited much of East Asia, but there is very little information about their daily lives and skills. What we do know is that they had dark skin, dark hair, and large teeth. Evidence suggests they may have interbred with Neanderthals. Additionally, Denisovan genes have been found in the DNA of some modern humans, indicating that they were likely assimilated into our species. Neanderthals. The rivalry between these relatives of ours and ancient cro manians has been documented not only in school textbooks but also in numerous films, both realistic and less so. It is well established that Neanderthals thrived in Europe long before Homo sapiens arrived. They were skilled at sewing clothing from animal hides, creating tools for hunting and daily life, and they possessed artistic abilities and rudimentary religious beliefs. It is highly probable that the more intellectually advanced cro whose tribes were larger, simply forced Neanderthals to seek new living spaces. Additionally, it is possible that a general cooling of the climate began during this time, and they could not adapt to the environmental changes. Among the remains found of this species, about 90% of the bones belong to children. It is likely that this species went extinct due to hunger and deprivation, but our distant ancestors also played a role in their demise. We thank our viewers for watching the video to the end. If you're interested in how life progressed afterward, you can learn more in other videos on our channel.